Arab Israel War 1967, which is also known as the Six Day War. Since the partition of Palestine in 1947, Israel and Arab have fought a number of full scale wars. In 1967, war was the third amongst all. After a period of high tension between Israel and its neighbors, the war began on June 5, 1967, with Israel launching surprise airstrikes against Arab forces. The outcome was a swift and decisive Israeli victory. Within six days, Israel took effective control of Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula of Egypt, the West Bank from Jordan, and the Golan Heights from Syria. Now, what was the background? Arab-Israeli enmity persisted since Israel's creation by the UN partition plan. Jewish Israel was engraved into Palestine against the will of its Arab residents due to their religious and political reasons. Further, with Arabian government's continual refusal of Israel's existence, Israel refused to return Palestinian land. Consequently, relations worsened. The rise of Nasir as the new president of Egypt in 1956 further escalated the Arab-Israeli conflict. Nasser led the Arab nations and sought for pan-Arabism in Middle East, directly interfering the elimination of the Jewish Israel in the Arabic region. Arab nations continuously suffered military humiliation from wars against Israel. Nasser secured a political victory in the Suez War but was militarily overwhelmed. Thus, Nasir's second round thinking to take revenge on Israeli encouraged the 1967 war. Moreover, the Suez crisis saw the emergence of Cold War politics in the Arab-Israeli conflict. Both the superpowers received their respective clients and subsequently provided them with arms. Furthermore, Syrian-Israeli air clashes on August 1966 and April 1967 further magnified Arab-Israeli tension. A false Soviet intelligence report on 13 May 1967 suggested to Nasser a planned Israeli invasion of Syria. Therefore, Nasser mobilized his army in preparation for war. In 1958, saw an Arab-Israeli agreement which stated future closing of tyrant straits as an act of war. Thus, when President Nasser once again closed the straits on May 22, 1967, Israel assumed Arab declaration of aggression and prepared for war. The USA also had an important role. In the final days prior to the June 5th breakout of war, United States had boosted Israeli military confidence. US promised to help Israel with United Nations to obstruct Soviet military aid to Arab nations during war and to provide military assurance with its Mediterranean fleet. So what all happened in various forms? We shall discuss all the forms one by one. First, Sinai Peninsula. The Sinai Peninsula is a triangular peninsula in Egypt of 60,000 square kilometers area. It is situated between the Mediterranean Sea to the north and the Red Sea to the south and is the only part of Egyptian territory located in Asia as opposed to Africa, effectively serving as a land bridge between two continents. In 1906, the Ottoman Empire formally transferred administration of Sinai to the Egyptian government. This line has served as the eastern border of Egypt ever since. The region has historically been the center of conflict between Egypt and Israel based largely on its strategic locations. The United Nations Emergency Force was stationed in Sinai to prevent any military occupation of the Sinai since 1956 after Egypt prohibited Israel, Israeli ships from using the Suez Canal owing to the state of war. Gaza Strip 
the Gaza Strip lies on the eastern coast of the Mediterranean Sea within the Middle East. The strip borders with Egypt on the southwest and with Israel on the east and north. It has a total area of 360 square kilometers. The Gaza Strip acquired its current boundaries as the cessation of fighting in the 1948 Arab-Israeli war. At first, Gaza Strip was officially administered by the All-Palestine Government established by the Arab League in September 1948. Since the dissolution of the All-Palestine Government in 1959 and until 1967, the Gaza Strip was directly administered by Egyptian military governor. Israel controlled the Gaza Strip again beginning in June 1967 after the Six-Day War. Since 2006, the governance of the Gaza Strip has been performed by the Hamas administrations. West Bank The West Bank of the Jordan River is the eastern part of the Palestinian territories located in Western Asia. To the west, north and the south, the West Bank shares borders with Israel. To the east, across the Jordan River, lies the Kingdom of Jordan. Following the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, this area was captured by Jordan. The name of West Bank was proposed by the Jordanian authorities to describe the area west of Jordan River. From 1948 until 1967, the area was under Jordanian rule. The West Bank was occupied by Israel during the Six-Day War in June 1967. Jordan didn't officially relinquish its claim to the area until 1988. The West Bank was not annexed by Israel but remained under Israeli military control as of today. Golan Heights The Golan Heights, referred to as the Syrian Golan by the United Nations and the Golan by other sources, form a rocky plateau that overlooks southern Syria. The plateau has an average altitude of 1000 meters, an area totaling 1800 square kilometers and links the boundary between Syria and Israel held territory. Internationally recognized as Syrian territory, it has been occupied and administered by Israel since 1967 Six-Day War. In addition to its strategic importance, Militarily, the Golan Heights contributes significantly to the water resources of the region. Now what happened in the war? Let us discuss sequentially. Preliminary airstrike by Israel, which was named as Operation Focus. On June 5 at 7.45, Israel time, the Israeli Air Force launched Operation Focus. All but 12 of its nearly 200 operational jets left the skies of Israel in a mass attack against Egypt's airfields. Although the powerful Jordanian radar facility detected waves of aircraft approaching Egypt and reported the code word for war up the Egyptian command chain, Egyptian command and communication problems prevented the warning from reaching the targeted airfields. The Israeli employed a mixed attack strategy, bombing and stuffing, ru stuffing runs against planes parked on the ground and bombing the runways to disable them and leave surviving aircraft unable to take off. The operation was more successful than expected, catching the Egyptians by surprise and destroying virtually all of the Egyptian air force on the ground. With few Israeli losses, a total of 338 Egyptian aircraft were destroyed and 100 pilots were killed, although the number of aircraft actually lost by the Egyptians is disputed. However, these are the number of aircrafts destroyed of various countries in that battle. Now, what happened in Gaza Strip and Sinai Peninsula on 5-6 June? The Egyptian deployment in Sinai Peninsula was based on the Soviet doctrine, where mobile armor units at strategic depth provide a dynamic defense while infantry units engage in defensive battles. Israeli forces concentrated with three armored divisions, 
they had massed on the border the night before the war, camouflaging themselves and observing radio silence before being ordered to advance. The Israeli plan was to surprise the Egyptian forces in both timing, location and method. The northernmost Israeli division crossed the border at south of Khan Yunis. The innovative plan by the division commander was to outflank Khan Yunis from the north and south with two separate brigades. The plan was largely successful and Israeli forces cleared the Egyptian position in Rafah and reached the Khan Yunis in little over four hours. Many Egyptians abandoned their commander and several staff officers were killed. Further south, the Israeli 38th Armored Division under Major General Ariel Sharon assaulted Umm Katif, a heavily fortified area defended by the Egyptian 2nd Infantry Division. As Sharon's division advanced into the Sinai, Egyptian forces staged successful delaying actions along the axis. Israeli tanks managed to penetrate the northern flank of Abu Ajayla at night as night fell. Israeli artillery began a barrage on Am Katif, firing some 6,000 shells in less than 20 minutes. The Israelis accomplished and sometimes exceeded their overall plan and had largely succeeded by the following day. Meanwhile, two Israeli reserve brigades penetrated the Sinai south, capturing the road junctions of Abu Ajayla and Arish, taking all of them before midnight. The Egyptians' counterattacks were beaten back by fierce resistance by the Israeli coupled with the airstrikes, sustaining heavy tank losses. Further south, the 8th Armored Brigade initially positioned as a ruse to draw off invasion forces from the real invasion routes, attacked the fortified bunkers at Kuntila and by nightfall captured Kuntila. Many of the Egyptian units remained intact and could have tried to prevent the Israelis from reaching to the Suez Canal or engaged in combat in the attempt to reach the canal. However, when the Egyptian Minister of Defense, Field Marshal Abdul Hakim Amir, heard about the fall of Abu Ajayla, he panicked and ordered all units in the Sinai to retreat. This order effectively meant the defeat of Egypt. As Egyptian columns retreated, Israeli aircraft and artillery attacked them. On June 8, Israel completed the capture of the Sinai. War in West Bank Jordan was reluctant to enter the war and the Israeli Defense Forces strategic plan was to remain on the defensive along the Jordanian front to enable focus on the expected campaign against Egypt. However, Nasser used the obscurity of the first hours of the conflict to convince King Hussein that he was victorious and King Hussein decided to attack. Intermittent machine gun exchanges began taking place in Jerusalem at 9.30 am and the firing gradually escalated as the Jordanians introduced 3-inch mortars and 106mm recoilless rifles. Israel assumed that the attacks were a symbolic gesture of solidarity with Egypt and sent a message to King Hussein promising not to initiate any action against Jordan if it stayed out of the war. King Hussein replied that it was too late. To counteract, the Israeli Air Force attacked Jordan's two air bases. During the late afternoon of June 5, the Israelis launched an offensive with their ground forces to encircle Jerusalem which lasted into the following day. The Israelis used Bangalore borders to blast their way through barbed wire <coughs> leading up to the position while exposed and under heavy fire. After receiving reinforcements, they moved up to attack Ammunition Hill. The Jordanian defenders, who were heavily dug in, fiercely resisted the attack. All of the Israeli officers except for two company commanders were killed and the fighting was mostly led by individual soldiers. 
on June 7, heavily fighting ensured on the outskirts of Jerusalem. The Israelis did not use armor during the battle out of fear of severe damage to the old city. In the north, one Israeli battalion was sent to check Jordan defenses in the Jordan Valley. The brigade belonging to Pellet's division captured the western part of the West Bank. One brigade attacked Jordanian artillery positions around Jenin. The Jordanian 12th Armored Battalion, which outnumbered the Israelis, held off repeated attempts to capture Jenin. However, Israeli air attacks took their toll and the Jordanian M48 platoons with their external fuel tanks proved vulnerable at short distances, even to the Israeli modified Shermans. Twelve Jordanian tanks were destroyed and only six remained operational. Just after dusk, Israeli forces arrived as reinforcement. The surviving Jordanian forces then withdrew to Jenin where they were reinforced by 25th Infantry Brigade. The Jordanians were effectively surrounded in Jenin. After sunrise, Israeli jets and artillery conducted a two-hour bombardment against the Jordanians. The Israelis then fought their way into Jenin and captured the city after fierce fighting. After the old city fell, the Jerusalem Brigade reinforced the paratroopers and continued to the south. Again, the air superiority of the Israeli Air Force proved paramount important in mobilizing the enemy, leading to its defeat. The Jordanians, anticipating an Israeli offensive deep into Jordan, assembled in the remnants of their army and Iraqi units in Jordan to protect their western approaches. But no specific decision had been made by Israel to capture any other territories controlled by the Jordan. Now the fightings in Golan Heights. False Egyptian reports of a cruising victory against the Israeli army and forecasts that Egyptian forces would soon be attacked Tel Aviv influenced Syria's willingness to enter the war. Syrian artillery began shelling northern Israel and 12 Syrian jets attacked Israeli settlements in Galilee. Israeli fighter jets intercepted the Syrian aircraft shooting down three and driving off the rest. On the evening of June 5, the Israeli Air Force attacked Syrian airfields. The Syrian Air Force lost a number of aircrafts and understood that the news it had heard from Egypt of the near total destruction of the Israeli military could not have been true. On June 7 and 8, the Israeli leadership debated about whether the Golan Heights should be attacked as well, the attack on Syria was initially planned for June 8, but was postponed for 24 hours. At 3 a.m. on June 9, Syria announced its acceptance of the ceasefire. Mm -hmm. Despite this, four hours later at 7 a.m., Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Dayan gave the order to go into action against Syria. Some Israeli leaders wanted to see Syria punished for their pre-war raids. On the morning of June 9, Israeli jets began carrying out dozens of sorties against Syrian positions from Mount Hermon to Tofik. The Syrians suffered heavy casualties and a drop in morale with the number of senior officers and troops deserting. About two hours after the air strikes began, the 8th Armored Brigade advanced into the Golan Heights with their ultimate objective being the fortress at Kala. By the evening of June 9, Syria's first line of defense had been shattered, but the defense beyond that remained largely intact. On the next day, June 10, the central and northern groups joined in a pincer movement on the plateau, but that fell mainly on empty territory as the Syrian forces retreated. At 8.30 am, the Syrians began blowing up their own bunkers, burning documents and retreating. Several Israeli units to the Golan from the south only to find the positions mostly empty. During the day, the Israeli units stopped after obtaining maneuver room between their positions and a line of volcanic hills to the west. 
to the east the ground terrain is an open gently sloping plain the position later became the ceasefire line known as the purple line so as a whole the 1967 arab israel war has significant effects both in arab world and israel after the war israeli territory grew by a factor of 3 including 1 million arabs placed under israeli's direct control in the newly captured territories israeli strategic depth grew to at least 300 km in the south 60 km in the east and 20 km of extremely rough terrain in the north this led the united security council to adopt resolution 242 the land of peace formula which called for israeli withdrawal from territories occupied in 1967 and the termination of all claims or states of belligerency <laughs>